ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. I know it's been, you know, a hot minute since you heard from me, um, and it's it's been a hot a hot hour since you have actually uh, seen from me. We're uh, we're gonna work on getting a, a new video out to y'all pretty soon, just because. Well, I think you all deserve to see my face. I have a nice face, and you all should look at it. Uh, but you know, I've had a good good last couple of weeks. You no, know, last week we had Memorial Day weekend. That's a pretty fantastic weekend for me. I had a great time. I'm gonna tell you a short little story here. I was uh, I was at the park uh, down here in North Georgia, and I was uh, I was invited to a Memorial Day softball game. Now, if you know anything about me, I normally am not one to play in the softball games. I normally like to be the umpire for those, so I get to show off my you know show stopping umpire skills. But this was not that kind of day. People wanted me to play with them. I decided, okay, I will go out and I will show everyone how to play adult softball. And let me tell you what, I had a hell of a day. It was fantastic. Charged the mound seven times at my five at-bats. I'll tell you this, people do not expect you to come charging the mound from center field. But when you do it, it'll wrap their head around faster than a copperhead. It is absolutely incredible. It's a... it's pretty exciting to uh, to charge the mound. People don't know how to do this effectively. There's a whole lot of issues. I saw the other day somebody tried to charge the mound in a, in a major league game, and I watched, and it was just sad. People are beating each other with their gloves, like some kind of BDSM kind of thing going on, and it was just embarrassing. I was embarrassed for those gentlemen. Came out there swinging like boys. People couldn't even throw punches. They're like throwing their mouth guards at each other. Those are tiny little rubber pieces. You really think they're going to hurt that bad with you throwing them? I know you play baseball, and you you have like the ability to throw hard. It's a rubber U-shaped device. That's not going to hurt that bad. So honestly, I'm going to have to teach people how to charge a mound effectively because people are not doing it right. Number one, never drop the bat. That's all I'm going to hint at right now because I think we might throw up a uh, video about it soon because I think you all just need to see how to do this. And I'll, I'll grab Pat from the gas station, grab a couple frozen burritos to trade with him for a couple hours of his time and uh, show you all how to charge a mound effectively. So keep your eyes posted for that coming out soon. But anyways, I was in this game, so I charged around seven times. I had five at-bats, four hits. Uh, one of them I did walk because I got hit by a pitch, which again gave me a great opportunity to charge the mound. Every time, listen, first strike, every single time, charge the mound. You get in that pitcher's head automatically. They're like, what am I supposed to do with this guy? I got to either walk him or throw him something easy. And let me tell you what, nine times out of ten in family softball games, they will throw the ball easy the next time, get in their mind. Bats really do create a great threat to people, and uh, that's not used enough in baseball. Too many people are, like, tossing their bat way too fast. But, yeah, four at-bats, absolutely fantastic day. At the end of everything, my team lifted me up and poured Gatorade on me. We had a rather tall fellow on the team, and he dumped the Gatorade on top of me while I was being lifted by um, a myriad of different women and children who were on my team, who I carried through this entire game, played shortstop, and center field, played a little bit of both. Had a couple great saves. Had uh, started off a, a double play single-handedly. Caught a ball, threw it off, got somebody else. Pretty incredible. I'm a pretty incredible person, honestly. That's that's just what you should take from this story. Is uh, Not only am I a great football coach, but I am also an incredible athlete. And people should be in honored of the fact anytime that I give you the opportunity to watch me perform a physical feat. It's, uh, it's a special time. Uh, other things that happened, uh, you know, our president has been over in England. Let me be honest with you. He fell asleep during the Queen's speech the other day, and it was the proudest thing I have ever seen as a president. I mean, this man literally showed England the business end of a good snooze, and that's quite impressive. He fell down. He just took a nice little sleeper right there while she's having a speech. And I relate to that. I, I many times have fallen asleep during really boring things. Uh, my mind tends to just kind of black out when people talk about boring stuff for too long. They call it some kind of disease. It has some letters with it. I'm not exactly sure what it is. I kind of quit paying attention once they start getting that far. I'm really proud of Donald. Well done, Donnie. You did really good there. That was, uh, that was a way to show England where they belong, which is underneath us as the oldest country in the world. When we, when we beat England... We earned the right to nap during their speeches when we beat them in a war to get rid of soccer and secede from the e European Union. Like that, that is why we do not need to be a part of England. It's because they're boring. They speak with weird accents. 
honestly, they're embarrassments to the world. Donald, well done to uh, take that little snoozles during the Queen's speech. That was impressive. I was I was proud of that for you. I don't always agree with everything you do. Objectifying women, trying to grab them. Many of your other policies I don't agree with, mainly because I don't believe in politics. And I think the entire political system is faulty and rigged. That's why I'm running for president. Um, got a short commercial break here, talking about one of our sponsors. And then I'll be right back to uh, give you my quick thoughts on sports. So we'll see you after this. Hi, Lo. It's me again, Dr. Sebastian, with a new batch of your favorite steroid, Terrinable. Did I make you big and strong last time? I know I did. Well, you have to keep going, because if not, your muscles will now become full of tumorous cancer. Haha, I got you. So keep going with Terrinable today. Ask your local tracksuit wearer. Or, as always, you can go to the gas station and buy their penis pills. But whatever you do, do not stop because you will die. <laughs> Torinable, recently named Men's Health Journal's top 10 ways to overdose. Pretty swanky if you ask me, huh? And welcome back. All right, we're moving into uh, one of my favorite segments. This is Letterman's Thoughts on Sports and other stuff. Listen, here's a big deal that we're going on in, uh, in sports right now. NBA Finals. There's a couple finals going on, NBA and hockey. We're going to start off with the NBA. Just watch game two on Sunday. Now, this, this podcast is being recorded on Tuesday, so I know there's a Wednesday one coming out. We may not have this out by then, so there may be some other things that happen. But right now we're tied one-to-one Golden State to Canada. Here's the thing, Canada. You all have operated and done the a system that I have found to be tried and true for many years, which is hurt all the players on the other team, and then you should be able to win pretty easily. But you did that... You got other teams to hurt some of these players. You you did it. You got other teams to hurt players. You hurt a couple players. You took out some of their best players. You're sitting here. This team, Golden State, is decimated by injury. And yet, you lost the game. You were unable to finish what, what you needed to finish. Number one, thank goodness that America did not go down two to zero to Canada. Okay. Number one, this is the first time Canada has ever made it to the finals. So that's a problem already that Canada is even in the finals. Like that's embarrassing on everyone else. But on the other side of that freaking golden state is so injured Canada and you lost to them. I just, here's the deal, Toronto. I'm going to help you out here because for the first time in my life, I'm going to help a foreign country because we need your help to get rid of golden state. Because there are certain dynasties in sports that just need to die. The Patriots, Golden State, Anthony Joshua finally died, so that was nice. We'll talk about that here in just a bit. It's just there are certain things that have to get broken. You know, then there are certain legacies and, and, and dynasties that should that will never die. Me, America, me again. I'm just saying the legacy of a youth football coach is much more important than the legacy of an NBA team. And... It's time for that dynasty to be shook up and get some newness. Also, Alabama's dynasty. Definitely need to shake that up. I can't believe I forgot about that one because that needs to absolutely end. And it's ending this year behind the power of Georgia and the power that we have. We will win this year. I helped set up Alabama, so I understand how they've been able to get this far. I get that. I helped recruit some players there, and I'm embarrassed to to that. But all those players have now cycled out of the process. So it is time that my touch wears off of that program. I just want to destroy Mark Rick. That's all I wanted was to get rid of him, and I've backfired and turned it around everywhere else. And I'm too damn good at what I was trying to do. Anyways, back to the finals. Here's the deal, Toronto. I'm going to give you – it's a great finals. It's a great sports series. It's a great sports story. But here's the deal. If you're playing Golden State, here's the thing. I've been able to beat Golden State, and that was the Memphis Grizzlies. In the third quarter, Golden State is going to go on a run. Every single game, they're going to go on a tear. What you have to do is hold the basketball. 
Do not jack up shots. Don't try to play at their pace. Play as slow as you possibly can. This should work well for you because you have physical players like Kawhi Leonard, who is a great drive and pass player. You have Mark Gasol, who can... He's he's on those Grizzlies teams. You've got Serge Ibaka. You've got... Who's also... I mean, Serge Ibaka. He blocka. That's what he does. You can play physical... Powerful basketball, slow the game down, take care of the ball, force Golden State to not have the time to score as much as they could. And once that third quarter ends, again, they get back into normal Golden State. You can go back to playing basketball the way you want to play it, and you'll be back where you need to be. But quit panicking, NBA. Every team does this. Everyone panics. When Golden State hits a couple threes in a row, they're like, Oh, God, here it comes. We got to start just heaving the ball at the rim. And it never works. Listen, it's what LeBron and Kyrie did. They slowed the game down. They played it great defense. And they said, you're going to hit your shots, but we're going to not allow you to hit enough of them to put us in a hole. And that, Toronto, is the key. Slow the game down. Just change it. Don't. I'm not saying change your defense. I'm not saying change any of those things. What I'm saying is just slow down. Take a breath. Kyle Lowry, you are a veteran in the league. Play that point guard position like you know how to play it. Don't try to go tick for tack with Steph Curry. You can't. He's Steph Curry. He plays basketball his way. This is the thing about sports. Every team has their own way to play. There's a way that you play best. And if you don't do that, then you are doing a disservice to yourself and the other members of your team. There is no reason for panic. Ever. You do not need to change what you do because the other team does something different. That is ridiculous. You take what you do, you do it as well as you possibly can, and then you minorly tweak yourself so that you know you play faster or you play slower. You do one of those things. My offense, we run the same plays. We've run the same plays since I came into the league in youth football, but I change it based on what the defense I'm going against. If they're a great stout defense, we're going down to that... You know, we're going to our three knees and punt because my defense is also going to be incredible and we're going to be able to dominate. Same time, we may switch it back the other direction, turn it into an absolute shootout. If I know that your corners are weak, I'm going to use Jordo's arm and the fact that he's much larger and he's going to be able to chuck the ball all over the place. That's who I'm depending on. That's the way you change the game. You do little things like that, but you don't just start heaving the ball up just because you're panicking. Never panic in sports. It's never worked out for anyone ever but that's all my thoughts on the nba right now because again we've got a lot listen we're tied one one okay so we're at least going to five games at this point and there's a lot of basketball to be played so i'm interested to see what all we get to and what can happen moving on to the greatest sport in the world of football spring camps are over in college and I think this is a real problem. We need to shift this. So the NFL is now just really getting underway. They're having OTAs, spring practices, spring meetings. They're working on all this stuff. It's not contact. They're really just working on plays, but they're at least practicing. They're working out in the facility with each other. They're building a bond. And honestly, if you don't think college football could go out and practice without pads, which I am number one, I'm against not not practicing in pads and not tackling. However, I understand this whole new thing with safety and we've just bowed, we have bowed down to big pharma at this point in football. And so we've, we've got to just keep playing with the cards we've been dealt. Unless you're me, in which case I deal my own cards and say, fuck everybody else. But anyways, that's why my team practices 365 days a year. That being said, NFL, you figured it out. You get a smaller offseason, then you're coming back, you're working out with each other. You're not necessarily going through the hardest things you're doing, but you're building a routine with one another because there's new players coming in all the time. And in college, there's even more turnover. This year, Jake Fromm is dealing with a whole bunch of new wide receivers. He's lost Riley Ridley. He's lost Nicole Hardman. He's lost his go-to running backs. There's been this shift. If I'm Georgia, I'm just, I want more time for Jake to get acclimated to his wide receivers. It would make the game better. So I just think we need to we need to lengthen spring practice, go into summer, allow teams to be able to actually do football activities in the summer where it's not just like, hey, we're working out. Like, working out is great, 
but you should work out in the morning and run plays in the evening. That two-a-day process through the whole summer would make college football extremely better. Also, college football needs to be more available to the fans, honestly. The the media gets to go to NFL OTAs. People are posting videos and stuff during it. Why are we not able to do that in college? Why can't we come and watch teams practice? I want to be able to come and throw out suggestions to Kirby Smart while Jake Fromm's running the offense. I think I should be able to throw suggestions to Jake Fromm himself while he's running the offense. Since they will not answer my phone calls or my many hot mails or many of my other different, they won't tweet back at me, nothing. I have to be able to get in contact with him somehow, and that should be that the fans are allowed to come to practices every one of them and they should sell booze at them honestly listen hey the sec is now able to sell booze at their stadiums listen i've been to a lot of bowl games in my life many most of them are the georgia bowl games but i've been at a lot of them and they're way more fun because i can drink there now i will say this the price for the alcohol is definitely way too expensive. If you hear this and you agree, send me a shout out on Twitter. Hashtag agree with Letterman. Because here's the deal. Number one, the beer and the alcohol is going to be way too expensive. If I don't have to stuff a couple of beer cans and bottles of Fireball down my pants, I'm going to be a lot more comfortable walking into the game if I only got to stick one bottle of Fireball in there and know that I can buy a couple beers. And I think well done SEC on that move. Now, if you can open up practices and have booze available and being sold there, we're going to be really in a that really good sweet spot about the availability and the glory of football. That'll be, then we can start talking about opening up the weight room to people being able to come in and help and different things like that. I just really think what I'm really talking about is my ability to come in and make Georgia better. That's really what this is all about. And maybe this is just to you, Georgia, maybe just allow me to come to practices and help out more Kirby. I know you get my, my phone calls. Okay. Jeremy gave you, I got my, your number from Jeremy and I know it works. So, okay, so give me the opportunity to come in and help coach. Give me that opportunity. I built Alabama. I can build Georgia. I can do it. I, if my if you got any proof, Alabama's dynasty, that's my walking proof. I'm just saying, I can help you out. The last thing I want to talk about on this thoughts on sports, though, is um, the game is, is boxing. Because something magical happened this last weekend in boxing when Andy Ruiz Jr., beat Anthony Joshua. Listen, Anthony Joshua is a great fighter. He's won and he's got, he's won Olympic gold medal. He's won lots of fights. He's a heavyweight champion, all those things. He's a very good boxer. But his manager is a moron for booking this fight on a short notice. Number 1, never book a fight on short notice. You know where I learned this? I learned that from watching the Rocky documentaries, okay? You never book a fight on short notice because that's how you get some Italian stallion rising up and beating your superstar fighter. This was basically just like that, except that instead of Andy Ruiz, instead of like Rocky, Andy Ruiz did not chase chickens around. He just ate a whole bunch of them while he drank his Modelo beers, okay? This young man looks like everything that should not win boxing. He does, but he has fought over a hundred amateur fights and he has only lost a few of those. And his professionals, he's only lost one professional fight. And that one was like, he didn't really lose. He's got quick hands. He's got great feet. He has a good chin. He's very technically sound. All those things do not set you up to win. Let me, I'll I'll tell you this short story. Listen, being a bigger person, I obviously am a good fan and a big fan of the larger human being. You know, Drake, One of my best friends in my whole world, my defensive coordinator, is a larger human. He's just a, he's a bigger boy. My special teams coach, Coach Mars, bigger guy. Fantastic footwork, bigger guy. Jordan, Jordan, my quarterback is, uh, how do I say this politely? He is not the slimmest quarterback in my youth football league, okay? When he got to called 212 pounds, that was a graceful measurement. And then Newbert, Newbert is an MMA fighter. He is and is not necessarily like chubby fat, but he's a heavyweight. Like he's a big boy. So I clearly am a big fan of the larger fella. And there are big guys who do, like here's the thing. The only reason Drake I ever bring into a fight is cuz he's just got the craziness to him, okay? Like that dude will show up with nails stuck into his hands so that he can punch like with brass knuckles but as nails i mean this man is a nutcase nail knuckles they there's this there is a there is a gang in georgia who literally 
only knows Drake as Nail Knuckles. That's what they call him. He comes walking up and they will scatter. People, you'll just see him walk down the street and people will just disappear. And they'll and all you'll hear is Nail Knuckles, Nail Knuckles, and they're gone. Marlon has really slow hands as a fighter. He does. I've been in a couple fights with Marlon, a couple PTA arguments gone wrong. Okay. And, or in my case, gone right. Marlon does not have fast hands. He does not have quick hands. They're not super strong. But Marlon has impeccable footwork. You should watch this man run a three-cone drill because it is incredibly impressive. It's what makes him such a great kicker. Honestly, it's what made him a great kicker in high school. And even now, he's got a great leg. Okay, and it's because his footwork is just impeccable. It's incredible what he can do with his feet. And that makes him great in a fight because when you can't hit somebody because they're ducking in and out when their feet are moving and they're up on their toes and all kinds of... And that's what Ruiz did. Every now and then he'd get a little flat-footed and that's when Joshua was able to move forward and get some tags on him. Then he'd get back on his toes and start moving and bobbing and weaving. And I'm just telling you right now, he had a couple moves. He'd duck under and do a good roll through on a couple swings and come back and pop Anthony Joshua in the back of the head, which he had rolled into that punch, making it even stronger. I mean, it was just an impressive fight by Andy Ruiz. Well done. I was pumped to see that happen. That was who I was hoping for. I was cheering for you. Now you got to get yourself ready. Number one, there's probably going to be a rematch. Then you're going to get Wilder. And the thing about Wilder is he is all, he is not a technically sound fighter whatsoever, but he has jackhammers for hands. Like some people have hammers for hands. This man has jackhammers for hands. And you just got to be careful with that one. Okay. Then Wilder is kind of like fighting Tommy Gunn. Okay, that's like when Rocky had to fight Tommy Gunn. Okay, this man is just wild. He's a killer. He's a crazy fighter. And Ruiz, don't you mess that up. Don't mess up what you have set yourself up for. You got an opportunity that you did not necessarily need, but you succeeded in it. And I'm proud of you for that. So well done. This uh, That's pretty much all I got on sports right now. So uh, this has been Letterman's Thoughts on Sports. And other stuff. Just to wrap things up, I'm just going to give you all a little heads up about what's going on in my life right now. We're, uh, you know, we're, we're working on some things, practicing lots, doing lots of practice, really putting Jordo through a real Q, QB camp so he can really advance himself, see if he can get moved on to move up into some other situations. I'll, I'll hate to see him go, but, you know, hopefully we can get him at the University of Georgia because Fromm's leaving this next year and God knows we're going to need a backup. We're going to need somebody to be the quarterback next year. So that's my hope. There's a couple other SEC schools who are hunting for Jordo. I'm really hoping he does not choose uh, those that are even further south. But, you know, I, I will support him in whatever he does. He is a player for me, and that's what I do for my players. As I support them, regardless of what I think about them, their choices, anything like that, I support for a certain price and percentage of what they make. Waterbeds do not always come cheap, and I do not finance waterbeds. Uh, we're ramping up for season two of this uh, docu series on my life and on my uh, coaching exploits. I'm, I'm excited about that. It's been really good. And then I just want to give this one little thing. If you are injured playing a sport and you take yourself out of the game, I automatically lose respect for you. Okay? Play through that. Clay Thompson, you left that finals game with an injury. You took yourself out. You were limping and hobbled. You could have played. You could still stand up. If you can't stand up, that's the only time I recognize that you should come out. Even then, I'm not sure. So that was embarrassing. If you have injuries in sports, play through them. That's the real deal. And here's how you do that, players. You go over to the sideline. You ask for a water bottle. You unscrew the top a little bit. You have a pill. You strap it to the inside of your underwear where you sew a small pocket. That pill has terenabol and horse hormones mixed together into a small pill. I have a good friend who makes these, Dr. Sebastian. They're incredible for in-game recovery and continuing to play. Listen, you play through those injuries. You get that pill from Dr. Sebastian, okay? It's a little bit of human of, of horse hormones and a little bit of terenabol mixed into a small pill. You drop that into your water, okay? And it dissolves into your water bottle. And then you squirt it in your mouth like Bugs Bunny squirts it in all his Looney Tune friends' mouths during Space Jam, okay? So Clay... That's the trick. That's how you're going to be able to play this next game. Honestly, KD, you should have been back weeks ago. This is an embarrassment. DeMarcus Cousins, 
Linemen play all the time with messed up quads, so I don't know what you're complaining about because you're not even as big as some of those guys. So, embarrassment. Put some braces on and go out and, and play, okay? I will say this. Braces do help when small things hurt, start to ache and hurt a little bit, okay? It's good to throw a brace on. I wear a knee brace because I, you know, once tore my ACL, went back into the game, played the rest of the game. I have never had surgery for it. Didn't need it. It regrew itself. That's how the body works. But I put a little knee brace on just because every now and then it gets a little tired. That's all it really takes. Just a little, you know, little help out, little support. A good brace on a good injury will help. It helps out. That's pretty much all I got this time, folks. Uh, tune in, you know, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, like, subscribe, tweet, all of those things. Check me out. I'm all over the place. Football season's coming, people. The dark days are soon to be over. It's going to be back in our lives before you know it. And, uh, you know, try to be more like me because that's what this whole thing is really all about is you all trying to be more like me. And, uh... Go dogs. Something that can make you do wrong. Make you do right. Yeah. Just a little reaction, because uh, we recorded the podcast before Wednesday night and now, you know, Thursday morning. Just here's the deal. You cannot sometimes win a game regardless of how talented you are if everybody on the team is injured i mean i'm just saying right now that when you lose clay you lose kd boogie's not really healthy i mean he didn't show up whatsoever last night and he's really the only sec you know player on golden state and when that guy doesn't show up i mean clay's got clay's injured he's out kd out and uh I mean, you can't bank on Steph. He's got zero SEC championships playing at Davidson. I mean, what are you going to depend on him? Andre Iguodala's old ass can't do much. And well, Draymond Green went to Michigan State, which means he is highly overrated. So, I mean, when you go out there and that's the team you have set up against a team that is full of their actual starters. I mean, there's just a thing as too many injuries. I learned this this last year, as you can see in my award-nominating docuseries about my life and my last season, you can see sometimes there's just too many injuries in life, and regardless of talent, it makes it difficult to win. Even if you got the best player in the whole league, you know, you got to deal with those injuries and you got to cope with that, and Golden State could not do it last night. Steph Curry is not enough to win you games like this because, honestly, he has zero SEC grind experience. He's just He doesn't know how to deal with this kind of a situation, and it shows clearly. Too much flash and not enough heart from uh, Steph Curry. I just, I really, uh, I feel like that's what the Warriors' issue is, is they just lack heart. They lack leadership. So, I mean, there's a lot to come from this team. There's still a lot to go in this series. Supposedly, KD and Clay are going to be back, and we'll see what happens there. But uh, I got to be honest with you, Canada looking pretty good. I mean, you beat a team, I mean, I guess on one side, you beat a team who had none of its actual starters really playing, and... You can't celebrate that too much, but at least you win when you should win. You know, listen, there are times you need to win when you win, okay? Like, you should win the games you should win, and that's what they did. So, what on Toronto? We'll see what happens in the rest of the series. Over and out. Young Dumb News Show.